Good morning, FCF. I can't believe it. This is our eighth journey now on this subject of the world. This will be our last day to focus on this topic, and I'm taking you toward the back of the New Testament, the book of 1 John, chapter 2, and I would like to read you verses 15 and a few that follow. 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15. The Apostle John says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Here we kind of close out this journey on the world by, by John telling us, don't love this world. Don't love its sinful cravings. Don't love its power trips. Don't love its possession trips. Don't be seduced by it. You don't tell someone not to love something unless there's something lovable about it. We know, folks, we know there's a lot of beauty, there's a lot of polish, there's a lot of sophistication, there's a lot of pull, there's a lot of power, there's a lot of pleasure, there's a lot of prestige, there's a lot of popularity. These things pull on us. They make us want to be a part. They, they draw our admiration and our attraction. And John says, don't fall for it. Don't be seduced by it. He says, love not the world nor the things that are in the world. The world loves you power, offers you power, offers us power, pleasure, popularity, possessions, the lust of the eyes. He says, don't, don't fall for the lust of the eyes. It doesn't matter how many things we get, newer, nicer, bigger, better. It's never enough and your life ticks by before you know it, it's over. The things of this world, the things that we can see will never satisfy the deepest cravings of our soul. You and I are made by Christ and for Christ, and the cravings of our soul cannot be satisfied anywhere other than in the immediate presence of Christ, where His will is done all the time, where it is eternally safe, eternally love-filled, eternally joy-filled, eternally health-filled. That is my destiny. That is your destiny as a Christ follower. Nothing in this world, though it seduces us, though it, it, echo, though, though it sings to us and wants us to chase it, it can't satisfy the deepest longings of a human soul. So John says, don't be seduced by the world. Don't love it or the things that it offers because the love of the Father is not in it. God's love is a love that is pure. It is a love that is unselfish. It is a love that seeks to build and bless and give. The world seeks to take and to amass things for oneself, but it can't ever really satisfy the deepest longings of a soul. And then John closes it out by saying, hey, don't be seduced because this world as it is, it's passing away. It's not going to last. It has a short shelf life. Everything that feels real, everything that feels tangible, everything that feels so permanent to us. John says it's not. Paul says elsewhere in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says it's the things we can't see that are immortal and eternal. He says the things we can see, they're temporary, they're temporal. Don't be seduced by those. Keep our focus on the things that are eternal. John says this, this world's passing away. Don't let it win you over. Don't let it win your affection. Don't, don't be found chasing something that's like a sand castle. I never, never really was much of a sand castle builder. You know, you can work on those things for hours and hours. I've watched people do this at the beach, build these elaborate sand castles for hours and hours and hours. And then they get out there with the shovels and everything. And some of them are pretty darn amazing. But you know, and I know how it all ends. That big, that big tide comes in, and when that big tide comes in, all their labor is gone. That's why John says the world as it is is passing away. But then John says in 1 John 2, 17, but the one that does the will of God endures forever. It's the will of God that's going to last forever. And when you and I, because of our trust in Christ, are devoted to God's will, we are those that love His will. We love His word. We want His ways. We can't wait until His kingdom fills the universe. And there's no other will around except God's alone. It is that desire in a human heart that will endure forever. Love not the world, FCF, follower of Christ, nor the things that are in the world, because this world this world is passing away very quickly. Thank you for taking this journey with me. I'm on the road to 
Thank you.